So now that we have our two final formulas, one for area and one for arc length, let's see how we can put these things to use. So the first thing I want to do is uh, find the area enclosed by x equals t squared minus 2t and y equals the square root of t and the x-axis. All right, so to do that, uh, I need to know where this graph, when this graph, really, right, because we're talking about the t parameter. Uh, when does the graph hit the x-axis? Well, it hits the x-axis uh, whenever x, specifically x of t, is equal to 0. All right, so when does that happen? Well, I'm just going to put our formula t squared minus 2t in here for x. And we can solve this by factoring. I'll factor this as t times t minus 2 equals 0. And this gives me two values, t equals 0 and t equals 2. Excellent. So those are going to be uh, my limits of integration. So now we can really just jump in here uh, and apply our formula. So I've got theta in here, but remember, uh, the specifics of the parameter don't really matter, right? The parameter can be anything. So we can make this t, right? And that's going to work uh, just fine. All right, so let's see. What is x prime? x prime, if I can kind of slip it in here, this is 2t minus 2. So that's going to make my integral, the integral from 0 to 2 of t to the 1 half times 2t minus 2 dt. All right, so let's see. Uh, what am I going to do next? Let's distribute uh, the t to the 1 half, get rid of the parentheses. This is the integral from 0 to 2, 2t to the 3 halves minus 2t to the 1 half dt. Now I'm, I'm going to so I could just integrate from here, right? We, we can find the antiderivatives of these things. But uh, to make my life a little simpler, I'm going to start by factoring out that 2 that both terms have in common. This is going to become 2 times the integral from 0 to 2 of t to the 3 halves minus t to the 1 half dt. Now I'm going to do uh, the antiderivative. Right, let's see, the antiderivative I'm going to use here, uh, this will become t to the 5 halves divided by half, divided by 5 halves, which is the same as times 2 fifths, minus t to the 3 halves. And again, right, dividing by 3 halves is the same as multiplying by 2 thirds. This is going to go from 0 to 2. And don't forget, I still have that 2 floating out front, the one that I factored out. All right, so it turns out this is nice, right? Because when we put 0 in there, uh, both terms are going to become 0. So really, it's, it's the 2 that's determining the answer. If I substitute 2 for t, this becomes 2 times 2 fifths, 2 to the 5 halves, minus 2 thirds, 2 to the 3 halves. Of course, substituting 0 in makes everybody 0. And the last thing I'll do right now, just, just kind of a little cleanup, let's distribute the 2 under the parentheses. This becomes 4 fifths, 2 to the 5 halves, minus 4 thirds, 2, excuse me, not t. What am I doing? We substituted, right? 4 thirds, 2 to the 3 halves. And there's my answer. Right, that is the area under this curve. All right, so let's take a look. So let's take a look at another example here. This is you know, one of our go-to curves. It's a cycloid. And I've specifically chosen the parameter r to be 1. So we're looking at a specific one here. So I've got a, a graph here, which is going to help us kind of figure out the limits of integration. So we're looking for one section, and remember that we're going to be integrating with respect to theta, not x or y. So the y parameter here will be 0 when theta equals 0, 
And again, here, when theta equals 2 pi. So those are going to be our bounds. Right? So now let's go ahead and take a look at our formula. And so let's, let's see. Uh, what do we need here? x prime. Remember this differentiating with respect to theta. So this is 1 minus cosine theta. Right, so that makes our area the integral from 0 to 2 pi, 1 minus cosine theta times 1 minus cosine theta d theta. All right, so now what? Let's see. Uh, I, I think my next approach here, I, I'm going to multiply this out. This is the integral from 0 to 2 pi of 1 minus 2 cosine theta plus cosine squared theta d theta. And so the, the first two parts of these are pretty straightforward to integrate. This is theta minus 2 sine theta plus now what am i going to do here uh, i need the integral from 0 to 2 pi of cosine squared theta well to, to do this uh, i'm going to need one of our trig formulas right a, a trig identity so i'm going to replace this with uh, one half times one plus cosine 2 theta all right all of that I can integrate okay so let's see this leaves me what do, I, what do I get then theta minus 2 sine theta plus one half I'm just going to kind of bring that one half out in front times one half theta plus one half sine 2 theta now I'm done integrating. I have this whole thing from 0 to 2 pi. All right, so let's see. Uh, I'm going to try see if I can simplify just a little bit, make my life a little easier. I can add these this theta and this 1 half theta together. So that's 3 halves theta. And here I have 1 fourth sine 2 theta. Right, so minus 2 sine theta plus 1 fourth sine 2 theta is going to be, I believe, uh, where I'm a plus 7 fourths sine 2 theta. I'm going to evaluate this from 0 to 2 pi. All right, so let's see. If I put 2 pi in here, this is 3 halves times 2 pi plus 7 fourths sine of 4 pi minus 3 halves times 0 plus 7 fourths sine of 0. And look, a lot of, a lot of this is nice. Look, look what happens here. This is great. Uh, this is 0. Sine of 0 is 0. Sine of 4 pi is 0. All that's left here is this part. The 2's cancel, and we're left with 3 pi. And that's it. There's our answer, right? The area under one arch of that cycloid is 3 pi. All right, so what's next? Um, we, we've got one more lecture in this uh, in this parametric equation series. We're going to do the same thing we did here. We're going to look at some ex uh, specific examples of how we can use the arc length formula.